Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com. It's Wednesday, June 1st. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. A St. Louis County school district is trying something new for students learning English. Bilingual education. District administrators say the class has boosted confidence and academic performance. I knew the research, but I've been so happily surprised by the astonishing growth they've had. St. Louis Public Radio's Kate Grumke will have more details in just a few minutes. The newly appointed head of the FBI office in St. Louis says partnerships with local law enforcement are still strong, despite a state law blocking enforcement of federal gun regulations. St. Louis Public Radio's Rachel Lippman reports. Governor Mike Parson signed the Second Amendment Preservation Act last year. Local police face lawsuits if they enforce federal gun laws. As a result, many police departments have backed out of partnerships with agencies like the FBI or the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. But FBI Special Agent in Charge Jay Greenberg says local commanders still want to cooperate. There is no lack of appetite for working together and collaborating and figuring out how we can overcome any barriers that are in our way to keep the citizens of St. Louis and its surrounding areas safe. The Justice Department has sued Missouri over the law. It's also supporting an effort by St. Louis and St. Louis and Jackson counties to challenge the law in state court. I'm Rachel Lipman, St. Louis Public Radio. Missouri legislators have approved a bill that would prohibit pharmacists from questioning doctors who prescribe off-label uses for ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine. As St. Louis Public Radio's Chad Davis reports, health experts worry restricting pharmacists would pose health risks for patients. The bill will prevent medical boards from disciplining doctors who legally prescribe the drugs sometimes used to treat people with the coronavirus. Federal health experts have warned against using them to treat people with the virus, citing potential health problems. Liz Chiarello is an associate professor of sociology and anthropology at St. Louis University who studies the work of pharmacists. She told St. Louis on the air that the bill could put patients at risk. It really opens up the opportunity to carve out medications that we do and don't like and allowing these shifting political winds to, to affect the kinds of care that we receive as patients. Ivermectin is typically prescribed to treat parasitic worms, while hydroxychloroquine is used to treat malaria. I'm Chad Davis, St. Louis Public Radio. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the Army Corps of Engineers are gathering input on how to implement clean water rules. Representatives from agriculture, environmental groups, and municipalities are among those attending a series of virtual roundtables on the topic. Mila Marshall is with the Illinois Sierra Club and wants to see stricter regulations. Our wastewater treatment facilities are not able to manage uh, and process waste and materials that they weren't designed to do 100 years ago. Um, Industry being held accountable for um, releasing toxins and pollutants into drinking water systems. Some farming interests say tighter regulations could make it more difficult to be profitable and restrict their ability to continue long-standing conservation efforts. The EPA will likely implement any changes by the end of the year. People of color and others who have been excluded from the film industry will soon get a chance to learn skills to help them break into the business. As St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin reports, the Missouri Film Office and a local nonprofit are hosting a workshop June 11th. Finding jobs in the film industry is particularly dependent on personal connections and decision makers in the business often are white. Michael Francis is a reality TV producer based in St. Louis, and he wants to help more people break into the business. He's on the board of Continuity. That's a nonprofit dedicated to increasing diversity in media. When there are not people who look like you who are picking who can have the opportunities to work or to be included in something, you don't have the inroads to be able to get in. The one-day workshop at Spot Content Studio in St. Louis will cover things like how to find jobs and professional etiquette on set. Applications are now open for 30 spots in the program. I'm Jeremy Goodwin, St. Louis Public Radio. As schools search for ways to help students disproportionately impacted by the pandemic, one St. Louis County district is trying something new. 
St. Louis Public Radio's Kate Grumke reports on a teaching model that is popular in other parts of the country but has been slow to reach Missouri. On a recent morning at Marion Elementary School in Overland, a class of second graders are paying close attention to their teacher, Jerry Ross. She leads them through an exercise to practice their letter sounds. Every kid is fully engaged, raising their hands enthusiastically to answer her questions. In this school in the Rittner School District, about a third of students speak Spanish at home including all of the kids in this class. In the afternoon, Ross switches a light from red to blue at the front of the room to tell everyone it's time to switch languages. The students sing a new song. Welcome all to the class in English. To the class in English. Goodbye, Ross says virtual school was especially tough for kids like the ones in this class who are learning English. With that in mind, Rittner administrators were looking for ways to give students extra support. Ross spoke up. And so I came to them with this bilingual classroom idea, and they were really curious on to see if it could work at Marion. Every day, the class is split. Students learn in Spanish in the morning and English in the afternoon. Decades of research has shown this method can really help kids learn. Instead of pausing all of their coursework until they're comfortable in English, students can jump into subjects like math right away. And Ross has seen positive results in her classroom firsthand. I knew the research, but I've been so happily surprised by the astonishing growth they've had, and it's empowered them and the whole school to embrace this language diversity we have here. Ross's principal, Belayle Ewing, says they chose students who needed extra help for this pilot program. He was surprised to see how quickly Ross's class closed gaps in math and English language arts. She's an outstanding teacher, but the results that she got with this class outpaced even the results that she had uh, shown with her normal classroom the previous year. This teaching method is popular in other parts of the country, like Chicago and Texas. In Illinois, it's even required in certain classrooms that have a lot of students who speak the same language. But... It's not very common in Missouri. That's Lisa Dorner, an associate professor at the University of Missouri. She researches education policy and language programs like this one. She says there are similar dual language classes in Carthage, Missouri, and Kansas City Public Schools. But that's about it. It is challenging to create these programs and do them really well. So there's a couple things that districts are, are usually worried about. First, districts have to have a large concentration of students who speak the same language. In some local districts, there's too much language diversity for a program like this. Another challenge is implementing the program equitably. How do you make sure the kids who need it are able to access it? Finally, one of the biggest barriers is finding teachers who are qualified to do this work. The Rittner School District is facing that hurdle, says Assistant Superintendent Julie Hahn. We just don't have the people. And even if you have the people, you have to have the right people. You have to have people with passion, compassion, a true understanding of language acquisition, and really want to do this particular job, because it's hard. Back at Marion Elementary, students were sprinting out of the building after school let out. Carmen Morales Mora was there to pick up her son, Jerry Urbina Morales, who is a student in the bilingual class. The family moved to the U.S. from Mexico two years ago, and Jerry's first year of school was entirely virtual. It was very difficult when it was for the computer because he was not concentrating. Morales Mora says Jerry had trouble concentrating because he couldn't understand the classes in English. Now, Jerry says he has a lot of friends in his class, and his favorite subjects are art, math, and writing. Sitting across from his mom, Jerry reads from an assignment, talking about what speaking both languages has meant for him. When I grow up, being bilingual will help me be a doctor. Being bilingual helps me because I can read better books and speak better. Next year, Jerry and his classmates will be back in traditional class. If they need it, they'll still receive extra support from language specialists. But Rittner Administrator Julie Hahn knows this isn't perfect. I do think that's one of our challenges. Now what? Because ideally, we would have a continuum of supports throughout their schooling, and we do not have the capacity at this time to do that. The bilingual class isn't going away. Next year, Ross will teach a first grade class to try to reach kids even earlier. I'm Kate Grumke, St. Louis Public Radio.
You can listen to a Spanish version of this story at stlpr.org. Our Shayla Farzan edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. This has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com.